Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I am all about Kubernetes in the home lab. As of last year, moving into this year, that has been one of my goals in the home lab. And as you guys know, I've created a lot of content around Kubernetes, installing Kubernetes, and how you can use it. However, one of the first questions that many may wonder when they get into running Kubernetes, especially in the home lab, is which Kubernetes distro do they need to run? There are many great distros out there, and honestly, any flavor of Kubernetes that you choose is going to be an excellent opportunity for learning and to wrap your head around the technology. However, there are two that I would like to showcase for this video, and those are K0s and K3s. K3s arguably is more familiar to many as it is produced by Rancher, and many in the home lab communities have used K3s before. However, K0s is an excellent Kubernetes distribution that we want to highlight in this video. So I'm going to take you guys through K0s versus K3s, which is best for use in the home lab. Stick around. So first off, let's talk about K0s. And it seems like the vendors honestly try to see who can come up with the lowest number for a Kubernetes distribution. But K0s, like K3s, is meant to be a very minimal distribution. It is produced by the Mirantis Corporation. Let's take a look at a few of the features of K0s and see how it can fit in your home lab environment. So if you navigate out and just simply Google K zeros, you're going to land on the official Morantis page for the project, which the address is K zeros project.io. And as you can see for the project, the description is the Kubernetes for Edge for IoT. So they are billing this as a very simple, very streamlined. Uh, but yet very powerful Kubernetes distribution. So looking at some of the features, we can see the versions of uh, 1.27 down to 1.24. It runs container D as the container runtime. Incidentally, the same as K3S, as we're going to mention there. Uh, also supported architectures x86 ARM64 and ARM v7. Also, as expected, Linux kernel supported and also interestingly, uh, Windows Server 2019, which they mentioned is experimental. The site is very informative. Uh, they've actually got a demo as well of how to uh, set up a cluster, which we are going to demonstrate as well, as well as some good getting started documentation. Next up is K3S, and K3S arguably, I feel like, is the more familiar of the two solutions. Uh, just simply because K3S, many are more familiar with it through other solutions such as Rancher and other open source projects that make use of K3S, such as Ketchup or K3S Up, KubeVip, and also I believe KubeSpray makes use of K3S. So K3S has a lot of momentum behind it in the home lab community. And honestly, I feel like it is a great solution. But let's take a look and see what K3S offers. What is its architecture? How does it stack up versus K0s? Well, let's take a closer look at K3S. So if you Google K3S, you're going to land on K3S.io. And as you can see, it's described by Rancher as a lightweight Kubernetes a certified Kubernetes distribution for IoT and edge computing and other use cases they list here. So why use K3S according to Rancher? Um, they say it's perfect for edge, it's simplified and secure, less than 70 megabyte binary. It's also noted as optimized for ARM. So if you're interested in a distribution that is optimized for something like a Raspberry Pi or a specific AWS instance, as a list here, K3S is certainly well suited for that. They've got a nice architectural diagram uh, for K3S. It's interesting to see uh, how the distribution is put together, as well as some really nice getting started documentation uh, showing how you can easily 
spin up a K3S server as well as nodes for your cluster, which we are going to demonstrate as well. So really good site as well with K3S. They like K0s have really nice documentation stepping you through multiple scenarios, various information that is helpful for spinning up a cluster in your home lab or even in production. So now I want to take you guys through how to install a Kubernetes cluster using both K0s as well as K3S. And also you don't have to have any scripting experience. Everything we are going to do is simply just copying and pasting commands into the command line on our Ubuntu server hosts. First up, let's take a look and see what the process looks like to install a K0s cluster on our Ubuntu server environment. Okay, so let's get started installing K0s on our Ubuntu server nodes. So I have three nodes running Ubuntu server 2204, and those are the nodes I'm going to use to stand up the K0s cluster. So the first thing that we're going to do on our control node is we're going to pull down and install K0s. And that's as simple as the sudo curl command. We're hitting the URL get k0s.sh and we're running that install script. So I'm just going to install that and that will install successfully. Now I'm going to do this on both the other nodes as well. So before we designate a control node or worker nodes, I'm just getting k0s installed. So on hosts one, two, and three. And we're going to now designate this host as the control node. And that is as simple as this command. It's uh, sudo k0s install controller. So we're designating the control node with the dash dash enable worker flag. Now we're just simply going to start k0s with the sudo k0s start command. And we can view the status with the sudo k0s status command. And we're looking at the status. As you can see here, we can see the version. It's not a single node cluster. The API probing was successful and we don't have any errors. So now on nodes two and three, we have installed K0s, but we still need to designate these nodes as worker nodes. But we have one step that we need to do first. On our control node, we have to create that join token that we're going to use on the worker nodes. Now that is as simple as the sudo K0s token create role equals worker. So I'm going to run this command. It's going to spit out a very long string that we're going to use as our token. So I'm going to carefully copy that. Go to our nodes two and three, which are going to be the worker nodes uh, in the cluster. And I'm going to first create a token.txt file. So I'm going to do that. Now we're going to edit that and I'm going to paste in the very long string. I'm going to save it and also do this on number three. Now that we have the token in place, we can now enable K0s on both of these nodes as worker nodes. So that command is sudo K0s install worker, and then we're passing in the token.txt file. So I'm going to run that on node two, very uneventful, nothing is returned but no errors either. And that's the, that's the key part. So I'm gonna run this also on node three. Now, very important, we need to start K0s on nodes two and three. And now we should be able to go back to node one, I'll clear the output here, and I'm going to issue the sudo K0s kubectl get nodes command. And there we have it, we've got three nodes that are joined to the Kubernetes cluster, the K0s cluster, and the one node that's not ready should be ready now, which it is. Simple as that. That is just how easy it is to spin up a K0s Kubernetes cluster in the home lab. So the process for K3S is very similar to K0. So I've got my same three nodes. I've reverted those back so they're clean, no Kubernetes installations uh, present on the nodes currently. So I'm just going to start with node one and we're going to 
paste in the command that we're going to use to pull down and execute the K3S installation. And that is a curl command similar to the K0's uh, installation. Uh, we're hitting the get.k3s.io URL. We're saying uh, to install a specific channel, which is 127.3, and we're then running the install script. And then we can take a look using systemctl at the service itself, uh, issue the systemctl status k3s. And as we can see, the service has correctly started. We don't see any errors and everything looks good there. Similar to k0s, we need to get the installation token for our worker nodes. Now, Arguably, K3S makes this just slightly easier since it actually spins up the token file for us. And we can then hit this file directly from the other boxes to install the worker node. So I'm going to cat this file. It's located at var live rancher K3S server node dash token. And as we can see, we've got our token file here. I'm going to spin up a notepad document and I'm going to paste in the command that I've got on my blog post, and we're going to replace the placeholder for the token with our actual join token. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over here. We're going to paste in your join token. So just going to put the token in there. In your environment, you're probably going to need to replace the IP address. Now, this actually is the correct IP address for my K3S node, but this will be the IP address of your control node that you have installed first. We're going to now navigate to nodes two and three, and we're going to issue this command on nodes two and three. So as we can see, we're passing in the token. It's pulling down. We're designating it as a worker node since we're passing that token and telling it where the control node is. So now I'm going to go to node three, going to clear this out. I want to do the exact same thing, execute the installation script with the control nodes token. And then once that completes, we can look at the status and this time it is K3S agent. So if we look at the K3S agent service, we can see once again, like we checked on the control node, the K3S service was running there. Now we see the K3S agent service is correctly running and we can do the same for our node two. So I'm going to issue this command. And as we can see, we've got our agent services show to be running. We should actually see our nodes, which we do. K3S up and running with a control node and two worker nodes. Again, extremely easy to get up and running with a K3S cluster in the home lab. Well guys, this has been really fun to take a look at just two very popular Kubernetes distributions that I feel have tremendous value in the home lab. Now, can you use full K8's uh, vanilla distribution from Google? Absolutely. And honestly, I recommend that you try all of the distributions that make sense for you because each of those Kubernetes distributions will allow you to learn slightly different skill sets, troubleshoot slightly different problems. Well, this has been really fun, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you're looking at dipping your toes into Kubernetes in the home lab, uh, these two distributions are certainly worth a look for you to stand up a working Kubernetes cluster with little effort and as we have shown in this video no scripting experience or automation to have to troubleshoot please do hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next video